Right, this is the last time I've got to admit this. Um, right, this is obviously all in audio, folks, so if you don't like audio only videos, then I do apologise for that. Well, actually, no, I don't apologise because I really, at this moment in time, it is like half one in the morning, and then, like, again, as always, I'm using my really crappy webcam. Anyway, so moving on, uh, I'm bringing to you an interesting development in the live action movies, or, or Transformers live action films. Um, it's just been brought to my attention, I've just been looking over YouTube, and I've just found out that Michael Bay is in fact not, not interested, and he is walking away from the fifth installment of Transformers 5, which I am very happy about, because yes, I agree, you know, you can argue all you want about Michael Bay. You know, Michael Bay's films have not really hit the bar when it comes to the main core fan base, but yet he has really, really helped bring a lot of young, young people throughout the period of the films since 07 right through to now. He has really brought a new breed, uh, you know, a new fan base, and re basically rejuvenated the Transformers. Uh, the Transformers toy line, as well as um, bringing a lot more interest to it, um, and also sparking uh, more Transformers actual animated TV series, um, such as Transformers Prime, which is also kind of a insp more inspired thing from the live action films, because uh, it uses a very similar character character design. Um, and then obviously there's Robots in Disguise coming out next year, which again is based upon Prime, again, a live action film. So um, yes, it's really helped develop it a little bit, it's, it's more or less rejuvenated the whole thing, because it was dying out uh, before these films came out, and uh, that's one good thing Michael Bay's done. Even though a lot of the fans would probably say, well, I really, I really wish Michael Bay just didn't even bother because, you know, it's just, you know, you know yeah, utter cat. But, um, no, I, I, I do give respect where it's due. I do, in my opinion, yes, Revenge of the Fallen was utterly ridiculous. You know, there was no story. We all know because that was due to the writer's strike at the time. Uh, so the film was rushed production. So, uh, yeah, uh, that's why the film just went with, just, just plummeted. Um, that was probably the worst film Michael Bay's ever made, and he knows that himself. Uh, so, yes, they, but yeah, I, I really do give respect where it's due to Michael Bay. He, he has done a decent job, even though it just hasn't hit the mark with the main fan base. But, uh, yes, I've just found out that Jonathan Liebesman has actually been named as an actual candidate, or it is official that he is replacing Michael Bay as the director for Transformers 5. Um, so yeah, I'm more or less just doing a discussion, just see what you people think, if it's a good idea. Um, what you guys, you know, just, I want your comments down below in the comments section, or if you want to make a video response, you may do that if you would like to. Um, I'm not going to force, but you know, you can if you want more the merrier, you know, it's really great to get other people's opinions on this development. Now, a lot of people, obviously, there's not much faith when it comes to the live action film. Um, there's many, there's quite a lot of the uh, people that I know from Art Assembly that just don't like, just don't, just do not give a shit anymore because they're generally always rubbish when they come out anywhere. Now, there's just no faith in them anymore from the main fans. That I know. Uh, well, I won't say all of them. I mean, some some of them might enjoy them for what they are, but um, a lot of them just just don't like them because they just don't like Michael Bay. Simple as. But um, yeah, but I, I think Jonathan Liebesman is an interesting uh, idea. Um, if you don't realise, if you don't know his back catalogue, Jonathan Liebesman obviously he directed the new that was released as of as of August. Well, I think I don't know if this is. Uh, this could be America, actually. America released it. I'm not sure, but as of uh, August 2014, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles was released. Um, I'm not sure if that was also UK or it might have been later. I don't know. Um, but yeah, so basically his latest work 
is the new Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles reboot film. Um, as well as he directed the sequel Clash of Titans, titled Wrath of Titans. Um, so yeah, so he directed the in 2010 uh, Wrath, of, Wrath of the Titans. Um, he also filmed titled uh, Odysseus, an epic based on Homer's Odyssey. Um, he also did Battle Los Angeles, which was quite a big flop. Um, it was a very 50-50 film. A lot of people didn't like that. Um, he also, in uh, 2008, he directed um, a film called The Killing Room. Uh, he also did directed the reboot to Friday the 13th in 2007. He also directed Texas Chainsaw Massacre at the beginning. Um, and also, I think, yes, he did. He, he directed Texas Chainsaw Massacre prequel. Oh, no, that was it at the beginning. Yeah, sorry. Um, and also, he directed the, the Rings in 2005, which he co-wrote with Erin Kruger. So, it looks like Erin Kruger, uh, Kruger is the main writer on Transformers, on Transformers live action films as well. So, he's had a bit of a history with him uh, as a writer. So it looks like he's going to have a, you know, so, yeah, it's interesting. It's an interesting, you know, he's more or less, uh, his, back, his back catalogue has more or less been horror. Um, so Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and Transformers is a completely different leap forward for him. Um, I think it, uh, I liked the new Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle film. It was, again, a bit of a 50-50 thing with fans. Uh, nobody had a bad word to say about the the turtles when they went to see the film because the the turtles were the best thing out of the whole film in general. Uh, everything else just didn't go for it at all. Uh, no, like uh, the casting was ridiculously crap. Uh, the story, the script, everything was ridiculous for the the film. But yet, the generic characters, the characters that mattered to us which were the Turtles, and Master Splinter, and Shredder, I felt they did, actually, I thought they were quite good. I, I, like, I liked them. And uh, that's my opinion. I liked them. But I know a lot of people that I know also liked it as well. Um, but yes, really, really interesting, because uh, Jonathan Lieberspin, I know uh, Michael Bay was uh, executive producer, well, he would be, because it's, it was... Um, because Jonathan Liebesman, he actually he actually works for Platinum Dunes, which is uh, Michael Bay's own director director's company or his own company. So uh, it was actually I think Platinum Dunes I think that took on the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle film anyway. So Michael Bay would be the executive producer behind the film in general anyway because he owns the company. So um, so yes so. Yeah, there was a hell of a lot of. Uh, it just seemed. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, even though it was Jonathan Liebesman that directed it, it did seem a hell of a lot similar to the Transformers films. It just seemed like all it did was just took the Transformers out and put Turtles in there. You know, it, there was not much. There was a not much difference. Not that much difference between the Transformers films and this one. So I've got a feeling, folks, unfortunately, I don't think we're going to get a fresh new look, a new direction. I think we're just going to have the same generic direction of storytelling, just like Michael Bay would, would have done. Um, so I think what they're going... But I think it's a good idea, I think it's a good thing that Jonathan Liebesman's on it, because, um, because in Transformers 4, we were left with quite a big cliffhanger with Optimus just leaving air for going to find those that lockdown told him that you were built. You know you were not born, you were built. So now Optimus is now going off his going off into space to try and find those that created him. So that is the main premise for the Transformers Bad film is that, you know, it's going to more be up there like, like well, more in space with Optimus. Um so, so that is that. So you kind of need a similar direction for the next two of the new trilogy. 
uh, for five and six, uh, the next two films, you do need this, a similar directory because it wouldn't make any sense getting somebody totally different that has a different creative input, completely creative imagination in at this point because it could completely confuse the whole thing. So I think it's a good decision on Steven Spielberg because obviously Steven Spielberg's the executive producer behind the Transformers films. So he, it was his decision of bringing him in as well as Paul Michael Bay. He probably had a bit of a say in it as well. So um, yeah, so I think it was a mutual decision between those two, and I think it was a smart move because it wouldn't have made any sense of bringing in somebody new, completely new. You know, nothing to do with Michael Bay, nothing to do with Steven Spielberg, just a completely new storyteller. It would have been, it it just wouldn't have made any sense because the story would have gone down a completely different route, and the, the the difference in direct in the directory would have probably thrown the story a little bit amok. So I think it's a good idea what they've done. You know, bringing in a bringing in a generic similar director like Michael Bay through Jonathan Liebesman. So uh, yeah, so that's my opinion. So I'm going to leave it now. I've been uh, I've been talking for quite a, quite a bit now talking about this, but let me know what you guys think. You know, it'd be interesting to see what you guys think about this. Um, let me know in the comments below your opinions on Jonathan Liebesman possibly being the next director for the Transformers Five. And uh, yeah, so thank you very much, people. I'll be back very soon with more videos. And uh, peace out and goodbye.